it is snowing like crazy. They called for four to six inches. We're already at about eight inches right now and it's still supposed to snow for another five, six hours. So behind me, got the Western wide out on my 2015 F-250. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of the in-cab view because it's about 12.30 at night right now and uh, I gotta keep working so I can't take too much time for filming. I do plan on investing in a GoPro here soon so I can do that for you guys. But right now we're gonna do in-cab view, plow with the Western wide out, show you guys a little bit of how I plow. A big place like this, this one's I think, don't quote me, I wanna say it's like 36,000 square feet. It's the biggest one I do. We're gonna hop in, uh, this is what we're running, back rack, some salt, Boss TGS 1100, and uh, strobe blade on top. I got it extended out into the 10, and, 10 foot width. I can press this retract button right here and bring it down to eight feet. And then I can scoop them both at the same time like that and it'll be in the scoop mode and then I can control each wing so I can have it like this so if I'm wind rolling to the left I have no spill off and then vice versa I can go like this and do it to the other side put that wing in it and go this way so what we're going to do here now is we're going to start plowing and I will show you exactly what we're doing so it's going to get dark in here and we're going to have some fun so there's so much snow on the ground right now that it's going to be hard to even go anywhere with it so what I'm going to try and do now is just basically push it all to the to the center so I'm going to show you, like you can see as we get up ahead, it's just getting worse and worse as far as the stuff goes. I can bring that right wing in so I don't put as much overflow around these cars. I will come back through and back drag this stuff because I'll be plowing this place again in a few hours. Um, I'm not going to be able to put a ton of snow in between where this car is, but I will put as much as I can. Raise the plow up and that's our first pass. So what I usually do at this place is end up going in circles because it's so big and i don't know if you can see this on camera if it's going to do it justice look at these tire tracks in there so i'd say we're somewhere in the eight inch range for snow um i'm gonna go around this place and i'll just show you kind of how how big it is and there's not really good places to put snow so i almost have to split it in half so i'll show you what i do like i'll get up here and i'll plow this half this way and the other half backwards the other way just because there's just not enough room for snow and I'll show you, we kind of have to go over a sidewalk and we're going to have a very, very big pile by the end of the night. And I got to make sure I don't hit the cars that are around me. That's the most important priority is staying safe and always watching your back. One thing that's nice about plowing this late at night is you don't have as many cars as I got the, that right wing scooped in and I'm gonna be able to plow all of this, windrow it to the left without having virtually any spill off. As we get to this bigger stuff here, I'm gonna go a little bit wider uh, to my right, so hopefully it does not spill off, because now that's about two feet tall with what we've just plowed. And I'm gonna take some of this over the curb, but it's really hard on the actual truck with my mount. I don't wanna bend my brackets at all, and I don't wanna cause any damage to the plow, so. It's kind of just playing with it. Uh, any other time, if there wasn't this much snow, I would continue plowing right here, but there's just really nowhere to go. So I am just gonna kind of keep going in a circle. One thing I recommend is plowing away from cars on both sides, kind of pushing everything to the middle. So right now I got everything windrowing to the middle. That way you're not building up piles around these cars and you're keeping it clean for them so that tomorrow morning when they have to shovel these things out, because they're gonna have to, and I'm probably gonna end up moving this middle plow marker so I can get through here. And the other thing is too, with all of this snow, you're gonna wanna push it back as far as possible. There's just so much of it that after today, there's gonna be nowhere else to go with it otherwise. You can see the cities haven't even been out. It's 12.30 in the morning. And now you can see, look at, look at no spill off. You, can't, you can tell me that you never get that with the V plow. That is for sure. And I'm pretty much only leaving about a one foot gap right now. And I'm gonna keep getting a little wider because we are getting a lot, a lot of snow. I really don't wanna bury that car. If that car was not there, I would be stacking it over there so I don't have to go over the curb, but I am gonna try my best to just kind of keep stacking it. Hopefully the snow will kind of build a ramp for the truck as well so that I'm kind of just driving right up over the curb, but you gotta get enough snow and pack down to be able to do that, so. Thankfully, I'm not responsible for the sidewalks at these places, so we really just get to focus on the plowing, which is fun. 
uh, but it's still going to be a lot, lot of hours plowing these places. So now I'm putting it in scoop mode, containing as much snow as possible. It's going to spill off the sides, but we're pushing as much as we can. Going to raise the plow up as soon as we get to these markers, drive forward, and just keep pushing it. So I'm almost a truck length into the grass. And we're sitting at about 20 degrees right now, so it really shouldn't do much grass damage at all. You might see a little bit, but I know the guy that takes care of the grass here, and uh, he does a pretty good job, and he won't mind so we're gonna keep plowing this to the left this is nice because i can just windrow it all the other stuff i kind of have to push to the center so it's a lot lot of snow you can see it is starting to spill over here because there just is so much snow this is insane there's got to be three feet of snow in front of me now so we're just going to see how big of a pile we can make keep driving and we'll see how close we get so it's a little bit as close as i want to get to that curb Get my defrosters going on here a little bit, but I don't want to get the air drowning out the sound for you guys. Um, yeah, so this one started out interesting. The weather people called for four to six inches, which, you know, makes sense. And then uh, we're sitting at at least eight right now, so it tells you what it is. Now it's just a never-ending battle of getting this stuff pushed to where it has to go. And it pays to really know where your properties are. I can tell you right to the right over where my plow is, there is a well cap. I know where it is though. It's far enough away that I don't have to worry about it. I recommend marking your sites as best as possible. Um, it just saves, it takes time, don't get me wrong, but it just, it saves you on a day like today because I wouldn't really be able to tell where everything is. You can get a rough idea, but yeah. So you can see we're plowing about two feet right now. And it's going to keep spilling over no matter what I do. I'm going to plow in this mailbox pretty soon. Jeez. What I will do here, just to show you the function of the scoop plow, is put my truck in reverse. <laughs> put it in scoop mode. And I'm going to back up and I'm going to hit some of these things. A lot of guys leave these when they know they're coming back to plow. I like to get as much snow out as I can. And in fact, look, at I can even get some of this out too now. So get as much away from these garages because the uh, people that shovel here, I think are the managers, and uh, they would appreciate it. Try to put yourself in the shoes of the people that are doing the work. If you can make their life easier, do it. Because I've been in the shoveling shoes, I still shovel snow, and it's not the most glamorous thing in the world, I can tell you that. So we just want to keep it clean. I guess I will still get that stuff. I don't want to get comments. You didn't backtrack against the garage doors, so whatever. Get over it. We'll get there. It's a problem when you have so much snow. And then instead of plowing it up every single time, sometimes I'll just kind of let it build up a little bit and push it all at once. This truck is a single cab too, which really makes the world of a difference. It really, really is nice. A lot better visibility out the back. And um, you're just able to do stuff a lot easier smaller turning radius on the actual truck it's starting to get pretty high i'd say that's about five and a half six feet so that's pretty good also helps sometimes to roll down your window so you can see a little bit better and hear what's going on around you so now i'm going to show you what we got so we're all the way over the roadway here Look at uh, this. So now what I'll do is I'm gonna keep windrowing it and then when we get to this mailbox, I don't really wanna plow it in, so I'm gonna angle the plow forward, I'm gonna scoop that wing in. It's still gonna get snow there, not as bad. We'll push that wing back. I can bring this back over and stack the snow up again. I'm watching that curb so I don't damage the truck. And that's what we got. So this is pretty much, this side of this is pretty much done. This is the easy side though. And I can go back and show you the other side, but I think that's gonna be boring. So I'll show you, they got, to my right, there's a little bit of a, a spot where some garages are. To my left, there's the same thing. There's one more spot where there's more garages as well. So that's about where that pile is gonna stay for right now. Now what I'm gonna do is take some of this stuff and uh, angle it to my left here barely make out where my plow markers are because they start to bend over with the wind. And I'm going to go straight this way. These are the uh, Western Nighthawk lights. It was about a $500 upgrade. And I can tell you one thing, it was worth every penny. 
especially at night plowing in general having being able to see at night is better and you can see right now that's what the brights that's without the brights so the brights do help not a huge huge difference but the other thing too is i try not to get it on these sidewalks that are to my left but sometimes you just can't help it and what i'll really really want to say again is just instead of a lot of guys they'll just plow keep plowing to the left you really don't want to plow these vehicles in so keep it to the right bring your wing in if you got it bring it back out get some more snow just keep stacking so it is currently january 27th i believe today 26 something like that and this is the first storm over three inches we've had here in wisconsin so we're near the milwaukee area so we usually see a decent amount of snow but it depends on the year so this year we haven't seen much a lot of small storms but this is our first big one that again they were calling for four to six and we're already at eight plus i had uh talked to a friend of mine earlier he's uh, about a city and a half away two cities away uh probably only a 15 minute drive from where we're at now and they have 14 inches of snow on the ground uh, if you guys know a bell from law force uh, he's more near the lake in the Milwaukee area, uh, kind of by Oak Creek, and he is going to get lake effect snow, which I'm sure a lot of you guys don't even know what that is. Basically, uh, it's getting more snow off the lake, so for a few miles out, a few cities out from the lake, they get more snow, and it's heavy, heavy snow, and it's a lot of snow. So. Out this direction, we don't really get the lake effect snow. There are some lakes, and that's one thing my dad and I were just having a conversation of is some of those smaller lakes might even be able to produce more lake effect snow. And that's really, and it comes out of nowhere too, and a lot of the meteorologists sometimes can't even really gauge it, so you never know what you get. The worst I ever saw uh, when plowing with a bell was, I was plowing a route about 20 minutes from the lake. We had about three inches of snow. And he calls me up and tells me I need to get over to one of the lake properties. He said there's 20 inches of snow on the ground. And I'm like, there ain't no way there's 20 inches of snow on the ground, right? I get down there, and sure enough, they get out, and I measured it. 19 inches of snow. That was by far the most I've ever seen. Uh, this is getting to push it, too. As you can see, some of these in the spots where it's windy, we're plowing at least a foot. In some places, more. It's just very, very kind of spotty just with the wind because they're saying the wind's supposed to get uh, pretty crazy here in the next few days and the temperatures are supposed to get cold. So, it is what it is though. This is what we sign up for. Thank God we have a uh, heated truck, you know, cab sitting in here out of the wind, out of the elements. My heart really goes out to the sidewalk guys that are out there for hours on end. Some of them with just shovels and snowblowers, other ones that are lucky enough to have sidewalk machines to get some of these places done that they do because they're the ones that are really out in the elements. Driving a plow truck is really actually not that hard. It's just, it does take some practice to get proficient with it. I'm not, no, I'm not an expert by any means, but I do have four years of plowing experience, so. It does help to have some of that. But I am gonna take some of this just off of this curb line this way. That's gonna help me later. Gosh, even it's looking like more. We just came from another property about an hour ago and uh, we ended up doing, it was the one property I do sidewalk at. It took us about an hour to do 1600 feet of sidewalk with about four or five inches on it. And uh, as soon as we were done, I, I had already plowed the lot. The lot had two inches on it again. So we are just, we are in for it is all I can say. So now what I'm gonna do is, because I know where this stuff is, there's this plow marker that's in the middle, if you guys saw it. Probably come out, that's for sure. Throw that in the back of the truck. So we can actually stack this snow. Because at this point, this snow, unless it gets really, really warm, these piles are gonna be around for quite a little bit. So, gotta find my controller and get back to work here. Let's see. So now at this point, I like to drive in circles. At night, I don't mind backing up uh, as long as I can see where the cars are and stuff like that and really get a good grasp and grip on where I'm going. But you can see it's just a never ending battle of the stuff I plowed to the left already accumulating and then this stuff 
So having that middle plow marker out is really gonna help me because I'm just gonna stack this stuff like crazy and I'm gonna stack it as far out as humanly possible. And a lot of guys won't do that, but I will because I don't wanna have to come do pushbacks later. We don't haul away snow. Uh, at least we haven't had to yet. I pray we don't have to because that's gonna be, that'd be a mess, but I do know some people with a dump truck. So if that ever happens, I mean, we're ready for it, but those guys do their own snow removal. And uh, I know that they're gonna be busy doing that. They haul a lot of snow actually, so. Just keep scooping it here. I'm just gonna keep plowing it up as high as we can. Raising it up before we get to the grass so we're not damaging that grass. Leaving a thin layer is really gonna help. And it makes a big difference. Now after this, if there wasn't as much snow here, I'd back drag a lot of this stuff first, but since there's so much snow, it it's almost gets hard on the truck to get traction that you're not going to be able to even get. If this roadway's not open, you wouldn't be able to back drag this stuff. Even with four-wheel drive, I don't care what anybody says, it's it's hard. So, raise my plow right when I get to the marker. Right here's where I gotta be careful of the well cap. It's somewhere back there. I should have marked it, but I told myself, this is my first year plowing this place. I didn't think I'd ever have to push snow back that far. But I definitely will be marking that in the future if I don't do it over the next few days. Just so I know where it is. This is also where like Google Maps can come in handy real quick too. So you can see satellite views of where stuff is roughly. You know, like if you've never plowed a lot before, like, oh, does this one have parking curbs? Tells you all that stuff, so thankful for technology. Um, I know this video is getting a little long. I will show you one more part real quick here. Another little like alcove kind of thing of more parking. We'll plow this out quick. And if you guys like this video, let me know, and I will gladly do more of them if we ever get more snow, <laughs> which is a very rare thing at the moment. But we uh, we'll take what we can get. This part's difficult because there's a sidewalk right here and I've hit this curb before and it does not feel pleasant. So we're just gonna take it slow and keep it there and let the snow keep pushing itself back. So I stayed away from the sidewalk on that pass. No matter what you do, uh, there's because there's a sidewalk running along this parking lot, you're gonna get spillover. I don't care what people say. So angle that wing in, angle the plow over, and I'm basically watching that plow marker that's all the way in the distance. Try not to hug the curb too much to scratch the plow up, but you're, it's gonna happen. And that sidewalk is about four feet from that plow marker, so there we go. And now you can see, here's another thing you guys can do too, and it depends on what kind of plow you have. See all that snow that's on the sidewalk? If I was the guy shoveling, I'd be pissed. So all you do is you take your truck, back up a little bit. It's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna be something. Now I'm gonna go up onto the curb a little bit if I try to lift it, or I can just do it from the ground. Let's see this one. We'll try. I want to get some of this off because that's already a lot of snow to, to snow blow on the shovel. But if we get just even, even this last 10 feet, there we go. Up on the curb. Just kind of scraping this. Let's see, it's not gonna be a perfect clean scrape because it's such a small sidewalk, but it's gonna help them with what they got for sure. So, it is what it is, look at that. I'd be happy if I, that was the only thing in my way, that's for sure. So. All right, so. Where you gotta always watch the cars when you're backing out because they could be coming out from either way now. And be vigilant to what's behind you light poles, mailboxes, people, cars, any of that stuff it can be a real headache sometimes. I'd say right now we're plowing at least a foot of snow in this part of the lot. Like I said, it does vary. I know I said like six inches and eight inches. You can just tell by when you're driving how much snow when you're driving away and how tall the plow is. And as you windrow, yes, it gets taller. So like this middle stack is two feet in spots all day long. But here we go, get some more snow and 
Just keep stacking it up. Scuba feature is really, really nice, but you're still going to get spillover with this much snow, no doubt about it. supposed to be just a decent sized storm has turned into pretty much blizzard conditions if you ask me i haven't seen snow like this in a couple years so but we'll take it we'll take what we can get right now i'm going to swing in here and scoop out as much as i can and i'll come back through and backtrack this section later i'm just trying to get everything just what we call an open up getting this down to pavement for now just so if people got to go places they can being only 12.45 right now, 12.46 in the morning, it's not a big deal, but just keeping some of the snow off is, is the priority, that's for sure. So, seeing what we can get. You'd be surprised too, you'd think that there'd be no cars on this lot driving around at night, but there's always one that's gonna come out of nowhere that's gonna surprise you. So, even when you think there's nobody around, there's people around. So you just gotta be mindful of it. And that's why I wanna get along here too. Get these people cleared out enough. And yeah. Almost done here. Speaking of cars, there's one behind me right now. He's waiting to get in here. So, and of course, what they like to do as always is pull right behind you. So we'll wait for them. It's funny because people always assume that you see them, even though you don't necessarily see them. And of course I would have went and plowed that out for him, but he's gonna park on top of it. So saves me some work. That's what you gotta watch out for, people like that. This last little bit here that I missed, send it down and see what we can get over here. All right, guys. Well, that's going to wrap it up for today. If you liked what you saw, let me know down in the comments below what you like, what you didn't like, what you'd like to see more of. Uh, maybe eventually we'll get some out of the cab views for you, but it's difficult when it's cold and snowy. Nobody wants to sit outside. The cameras don't like to be outside either because it's hard on them. But it is what it is. So that's where I'll leave you guys right here. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. And we'll see you in the next one. Take care.